Once again, if you guys want to see me create and give tips and tricks live, you can visit me on my Twitch channel where we hang out almost daily. I think at this point all of us know that Jump to Dash is a rhythm-based platformer. It goes without saying that such games would be bland and boring without moving elements. Even the definition of the word rhythm talks about movement. The game thankfully provides creators full control over what they want to move and how they want to move it. This trigger alone can carry a level and turn it from being a boring layout to an interesting reflection of the song that is fun to play and experience. However, there are also millions of ways movements can destroy the experience and completely ruin them, all just because the creator didn't understand why he's using moving objects to begin with. With that in mind, I'm here today to show new creators how to use the move trigger, every single tip and trick I know about the move trigger, awesome things you can do with the move trigger, and just generally everything I know about move triggers. Don't forget that these videos shouldn't be treated like rule books. Treat it more like a friend, here to help and guide you, to make you more aware of what exactly is actually possible in this game. And trust me, there's a lot. Welcome to Know Your Editor, the little mini-series that I do on my channel, where I go over everything that I know about the editor. Today, we're gonna be looking into the movement trigger. Holy shit, an intro like that makes these videos seem way more professional than they really are. When it comes to movements, there are really only two ways people really use them. One of them is visually, where the movement doesn't really interact with the player at all and has no other purpose than to make the level feel more dynamic or flowy or just more visually interesting. The other one is directly, where the movement alters the gameplay in a way so the player has to account for the movements happening and react in time. Both have millions of ways you can creatively use them and today we're gonna look at exactly how you can do that. Cause I certainly can. Before we get into how move triggers work and how to use them, I want to show you guys some of my favorite examples of movements that just work in my opinion. The Ocular Miracle Spaceship. The Spaceship in Ocular Miracle is a great example of what a creative mind can come up with knowing how to use move triggers. As part of the climax in the intro of the song, it sends you off perfectly into the next part of the level, reflecting the intensity the song provides there. The next example I want to show off was actually made by me three years ago. A lot of you probably know it since it's a part in Zodiac. And I'm not here to toot my own horn, I just genuinely think it's a good example of representing the song in movements. Another example of a creative idea executed in a decent way is the thing I also did three years ago. And I swear to God, if I get one comment that mocks me for including my own stuff here, I'll find out where you live and steal your lasagna. It's this pirate in Settlers, my solo project that I've been working on for three years now. The way the sharp, dangerous blade just comes down and almost kills the player perfectly resembles the sharp, swishy, swooshy noise in the song. And just again, makes it a really cool thing that couldn't exist without move or rotate triggers. Those we will talk about another day. I know there are a thousand more examples out there, but I'm trying to keep this video as short as possible so I won't get spanked by Alien again. Wait, give me a second. To understand why all these things are good movements, I also want to show off bad ways I've seen movements be implemented. But wait, disclaimer time! Please do not use this video as ground to go and insult, harass or mock any of these levels or their creators. I'm simply here to show what I think should be avoided if you want to get a fun playing experience out of your levels. Now, I'm actually not that involved with the community and the game anymore, so I couldn't really remember any levels that used move triggers in a way that is unfun or frustrating. So I went to my last resource. Twitter. <laughs> I asked all of you what level stood out to you for using move triggers in an unfun way and you delivered. Most of the answers I got were 2.0 levels though, so that is a good sign that creators have evolved over the years to avoid certain types of move usage. Good job, I'm proud of you. Exploring space by Zomazar kicks you in the ass at the moment it begins. It perfectly shows what not to do when it comes to using movements. 
all of these structures appear in such an unpredictable way with no patterns whatsoever, so the player just has to guess? Guess it often enough and learn it by muscle memory is the name of the game here. And to me personally, that's the most unfun type of gameplay. It doesn't feel like there is skill involved. It's just do it till you do it. There's no point behind it. The next one is, uh, yeah. I know it's kind of unfair to show in a way since it's such an old level, but it perfectly reflects everything wrong with move triggers and how not to use them. I mean, just look at this. Who thought this was a good idea? Who who in the right mind sat down at this business meeting and greenlit this decision? Now that we have covered good and bad examples of using the move trigger, let's go over how the move trigger actually is set up. How do you use it? I'll show how to create movements and give tricks on making them feel dynamic and smooth. Let's begin with the absolute basics of the move trigger. It works with groups. You give the thing you want to move a group, which you input here, in the bottom right. Now the move trigger knows who it's working with. In this case, let's just call the structure Tom. Slayer of bad movement triggers. Next up, you can choose how much you want to move Tom and how long you want that specific movement to take. Note that 10 units is exactly one grid step of movement. So if I put in 10 in the Y axis, here it will move up by one block. Y is up and down, and X means left and right. You can go into plus and also into minus. That's basically how you set up the movement trigger. But just like my browser history, this trigger has more secrets in store. Also known as easings. This is where the trigger separates the big boys from the small boys. If you correctly learn all of these easings, your movement possibilities are almost endless. I'm saying almost because sometimes this game feels like it's coded by this guy in my Discord server. And let me tell you, that's not a good thing. Basically, easings control in what way the movement is executed by the trigger. For example, if you don't have any easing, the trigger is just gonna make it move from point A to point B at a constant speed. If we put the ease out, for example, you'll see, hey, now it moves smoothly, slowly stopping into place, instead of looking like it crashed into a brick wall. This is the basics of easings. The game gives you 18 different easings, and I swear, please learn them. Knowing all of these gives you the knowledge and tools you need to be able to execute any idea that pops into your head. Not that one though, who, who made that? Techno, what's this for you again? Here is a visual representation of all easings and what they do. They happen over a two second time frame. We are just moving this block to the right by five blocks. While all of this is happening, I'm gonna go and grab some lasagna, so I'll be back with whatever you guys have done here. Ah, oh, fuck it is. Ah. Ah. So, with these easings, you can pretty much do anything. Whenever you look at a moving structure or have an idea for a movement, try to imagine it in your head exactly how you want it to move. In the beginning, you're gonna have a bit of troubles exactly visualizing ideas in your head. But the more you do it, the better your brain gets at it. Repetition is key when it comes to these things, so I wish you all the best of luck with creating. Don't give up, you will improve. I'm not gonna lie, I literally just found out about this while writing this video, but apparently this thing exists. Use target. This is cool. You can basically take an object and make it the target of your movement. 
So now we can actually yeet objects at each other in GD. Oh my god, how if I only noticed this now? The two last things the trigger has to offer are these two buttons. Spawn triggered and touch triggered. Spawn triggered basically lets a different trigger, the spawn trigger, activate the movement. The trigger now depends on the spawn trigger to activate its movement and not the player position anymore. This allows for delays and full control over when exactly you want the movement to happen. So you don't have to rely on the janky physics of the game to work out for you. Yeah, that thing. Touch trigger basically creates this blue box around the trigger. If the player hitbox touches any part of this blue box, it will trigger the movement. I use it here, for example, to make sure the player won't skip this orb. If the player doesn't use this orb, he will never touch the trigger, meaning the structure won't move up and block the way, resulting in his death. It is also visualized by these two green designs showing the player, all right, this orb has to do with this structure moving. Let's move on though, before the triggers give me a restraining order again. I don't know if you were aware of this, but movements actually stack in this game. When two move triggers collide, they don't just cancel each other out, like I get canceled on Twitter every day, they actually stack. Like, big stack. This basically means that you can combine different easings to get a completely new easing. Check these two out, for example. They basically work by starting the movement with one in easing and then stacking it with the second out easing. The possibilities are endless. Your brain is the limit. One big part about this video that I wanted to do is showing what's possible. The reason I want to do this is to maybe give you motivation or ideas yourself to use in your own levels. I'm going to show you some cool ways I've personally used movements in the past to give the player an interesting experience. Another thing I want to lay out to you is a tip for your workflow when it comes to making levels. I usually start by making the layout. Then I give the layout structures like this. These structures help me out a ton with visualizing and planning movement ideas. It shows you exactly what you are moving before you are even designing it. Just like with everything in this game, there are certain bugs you will need to watch out for. I'm telling you this because when I started building in this game, I ran into bugs but blamed it on myself for being a bad creator, which was a very, very unhealthy mindset. So please, if something doesn't work the way it's supposed to, ask your friends what they think before blaming it on you being an awful creator. It's not true and it's not healthy. The first bug I want you guys to know about is the start position bug. This one happens when you put down a start position in the editor to playtest your part, but the start position is on the exact same x-axis as a movement trigger. I don't know why the game does this, but this trigger will now trigger twice, meaning the movements are gonna go twice as far. I think this happens with every single trigger, so be really, really careful on where you put down your start position so you don't have this bug happen to you. Another thing is when you have a very, very object heavy level, like my solo project Settlers is with 200,000 objects, editor playtest is not gonna run smoothly. However, there's a cool trick that you can do which is double clicking the playtest. So you double click it, wait two to three seconds for all of the movements to happen, then it's gonna snap into position and pause itself, and then you can press play again, and now everything is gonna be synced again. I think this covers absolutely everything that I know about the move trigger. If there's something I missed, please put it in the comments. I might pin some really, really useful ones. So if you're looking for more tips or tricks or issues, probably down in the comments is a good place to look for. Again, thank you all so, so much for watching these videos. I am having an absolute blast making them. You guys are literally making my dream come true by, by supporting me on Twitch and supporting me for YouTube and all of that stuff. Like, this is something I wanted to do for a really, really long time. So thank you all so, so much from the bottom of my heart. With that, I think I will send you off into the outro. I would love to see a bunch of you over on my Twitch channel where I stream almost daily. We do loads of fun stuff like building on Saturdays, my solo project with 200,000 objects. But we also want to do some speedrunning streams soon where we go and grind for the fastest possible time, which sounds really, really fun to me. But yeah, until then, keep your world shining. I'll see you later. Take care.